Hello everyone and welcome to Tip of the Week. I'm sorry I haven't been able to do a tip in a while. I've spent the past few months traveling extensively around the world, um, speaking with a lot of our studio partners who are using our technology and getting ideas of um, how we want to move forward in the future. And I spent almost a month in Japan already this year. Yoroshiku uh, onegaishimasu! So um, let's see how we can keep Tip of the Week rolling now for 2013. I'm going to do my best to try and bring out a video every week so that we can have a little bit of new content and new understanding about how to use our technology. So this week I'd like to start by going over Storyboard Pro. As some of you may know, we had a new release of Storyboard Pro last week. And one of the major um, new advantages to using this uh, version is that we've added a lot more tools for doing some um, really cool types of drawing and being able to draw on a bitmap layer and so on. What I'd like to focus on this week is just going over the brushes. And so as you may notice, the tool properties window here has changed quite a bit. As usual, the tool properties window changes depending on which tool you have selected. And when you have the brush tool selected, you'll see this new brush properties or tool properties view here. You also do have the color view docked directly in with the tool properties view so that as you switch from one tab to another that color view gets hidden automatically um, which is something that uh, was requested for a long time. So um, we're going to talk about color another time. Today we're just going to talk about these brushes. So the way that these brushes work now is that when you choose to draw with a brush what happens is that um, you select over here the, the brush preset for the brush that you want to work on and when you click on that preset it adjusts the current brush properties to match the properties that you've set in your preset. So for example this is at 200 maximum size and a flow of 10. So if I draw a stroke it uses those properties. Now if I decide to change something, for example if I bring the size down to 46 here and I draw a stroke, it changes it in my current window, it changes it for my current brush but do you see that the brush preset here has not changed? This one is still at 200. If I click again on the same brush, it brings it back to 200 again. This is the way that this technology works in a lot of other technologies like Photoshop, for example, um, where these brush presets are kind of just like a snapshot in time of what you want your brush to look like. Having it work this way is a lot more consistent it means that you can always go back to that set of brushes. It also means that you can share your brushes with other people that are working on your project. So sometimes if you're working on a team, you might want to be able to export brushes and import brushes back in again. And so being able to really solidify the brush presets that you're working on is extremely useful. Now that being said, let's say I take my soft shading brush and I change it to 48, but I want to save these settings. All you've got to do here now is click on the new brush and if you click on new brush and let's call this soft you know 50, I'll, I'll just call it 50 because it's almost 50 then this now shows up as a new item in my list and I can access this brush anytime that I want to. If you want to you can always go back and delete the original so you know you don't have to keep brushes that you're not working with of course you can just click on the delete brush to delete that brush from your list. So hopefully that makes sense here in, in general how these things work. Now one thing that you should be aware of is that um, we show in this sort of main tool properties window here just a couple of these options that you'll change all the time as you're drawing. Um, the two options that we've chosen here are maximum size and flow. And the reason is that as you're drawing on the fly you often want to adjust how big the brush is and how much ink is being laid down. Think of this flow kind of like the opacity. Basically it says the higher the flow the more ink is being laid down over time. However, even though these two are visible here, if you click on this triangle next to the current brush this brings up all of the brush properties. And so as you can see you can adjust the maximum size and the minimum size here and the minimum size is now a percentage of the maximum size and so as you change your maximum size proportionately um, the shape of your brush is the same so it, it's a, a lot easier to work with from that perspective also you've got the maximum flow here and you've got minimum flow and so what this means is that when you, whenever you have a minimum and a maximum value 
it means that when you press lightly with your pen that you get the minimum value and when you press hard with your pen you get the maximum value and of course if you're ever working with a mouse it's always the maximum value that gets applied so in addition to minimum maximum flow and minimum maximum size you do also have the ability to adjust the spacing of your brush and then you can also apply a texture to your brush as well so hardness affects you know how kind of blurry or how sharp um, the the stamping is of the head there so you can kind of get some interesting looking um, you know texturing just by adjusting the hardness and the and the spacing there you can also choose to select a texture and then you can import a texture in here there are a number of brushes in here that already have textures in them for example the marker um, and the textured airbrush and so on these ones already have textures applied to them I will do another tip of the week to show you guys how to make your own tiled texture I'll do that next week it just takes a little bit uh, an extra five ten minutes so I'd like to save that for next week but the only thing that you want to be aware of when you're importing a texture in here is that you do want to make sure that texture is tiled and the reason is that as you're drawing you know with this texture it's kind of applying the texture there along the length of your line and so if it's not tiled then you might see a seam where the edge of the texture is and this texture here is adjusting the opacity of your line the color of the line is still being defined by the color swatches um, or the or the RGB value there so you can select a texture brush and you can choose to draw you know like with a different color and it still applies that texture to that color so that's all I want to go over this week how to create new brushes and if you do remember if you do now adjust all these properties the way that you like them and you want to save them as new brush from within this window you can also click on the add brush button and you can create a new one so we could call this the rough. So I'll catch you guys next week when we'll go over how to tile textures. And uh, see you guys next week. Have a good week.